The last thing that you want to do is wake up in the morning and find out that, oh my gosh, my hard drive crashed and all my data was never backed up. It's going to be like, wow, this is exactly what happened to me, and it almost made me want to give up making music. Now, this happened years ago, and thank goodness I do these simple techniques to make sure that I back up my files every single time. And so the first thing I want to talk about is when you're in FL Studio, make sure that when you export your files, put them on a portable drive, Always copy them over somewhere else. It doesn't matter. But the method that I use is I go to File, Export, and Export Zip Loop Package. And then I save it. What that's going to do is that's going to contain all my zip WAV files. So I got my kick in here. I have my vocals that I have right here that I recorded in. I got the clap, snare, and I even got the project beat. So literally when I open up FL Studio, let's say I need to open the beat. It's going to contain all my WAV files that I have on the list here and automatically open up from that zip file itself. And then I can actually send you the zip file and you can open up the same project and start working, save it and send it back to me. Now here's the pitfall about using zip loop package is because it's only going to contain all the data like the melodies and so forth that you made, the drums that you made, everything, your, your vocal recording that you have. However, it's not going to contain a third party VST. So let's say I use Hanley and Sonic or um, example tank or whatever those that I have or and that you don't, let's just say, if I send you the project file, you are not going to be able to open it up. It's going to say you're missing the VST. So what you're going to want to do on that case, and this is an extra backup, because let's say you had a VST from years ago and it's no longer around and your computer crashes and you don't have that VST backed up, then you're going to open up your project and you're going to have to find some VST with the exact same sound to replicate and that may be difficult to do. So what I normally do is I click on the melody, let's just say, let's pretend this is Hanley and Sonic even though this is Citrus so it should open up later on. I don't really have to do this if I'm using stock FL plugins. I'm going to click on here. I'm going to go to render as audio clip. I'm going to do this for every single melody of a plugin that I might have. Hanley and Sonic, Example Tank, whatever the case. Because this is going to be an extra backup in case that you don't have that VST plugin anymore. So there are a couple things that you're going to want to know about. If you have something that don't have a delay behind it or whatever the case it is, something short and it's cut, you can cut the remainder, you can leave the remainder, or wrap the remainder. So in this case, I'm going to cut it. Now, typically, because I want, I might want to use a different effect later on, let's say years down the line, I might want to um, have it not have post effects on it. So I'm going to disable or uncheck this, enable insert effects, and then I'm going to start it. This is going to give me a WAV file here that should sound exactly like the melody. I don't have to use this at all, but if I lose Citrus or Hanley and Sonic or something later on due to the computer crash because I didn't have it backed up, whatever the case, I lost my key code and now um, that plugin company is not allowing me to download that plugin anymore. I still have the WAV file of that original sound. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that over here back in 41 since that's where Citrus was in the first place, and then I'm gonna play it real quick. See, the WAV file is gonna come out the same way it's gonna sound here, 
but since and then when I put it on there, it's gonna still process those effects. But if I were to enable render this audio clip, and then if I were to enable the insert effects, it's gonna have those exact same effects on it by default. Let me just play it on the default right here and show you. Okay. So normally I don't enable inserts unless I have third party VST plugins like some kind of special stereo enhancer or something like that that's not stock. Then I might enable the effects because I want that same sound effect on it. So now when you go ahead and export this or export, since you already say that you can basically just save over it. It's already saving it as a zip file. And now when I go here and I double click it, you're going to see that I have some extra melodies in here. That one's without the effects. This one is with the effects on it. So having those copies are very important. Because like I said, if you have to default, if you can't don't have your VST plugin, like Hanley and Sonic or whichever one you're using, then you can default to your WAV file and still get that exact same sound that you want to. Wadded or whatever. Um, so I made a simple beat for demonstration purposes, obviously, and I made a simple vocal recording just to be silly. But here we go. Microphone check, yeah, microphone check. Microphone check, microphone check, yeah. Microphone check, yeah. Microphone check, microphone check, microphone check, yeah. Microphone check. Anyways, I'm just being silly. Um, and then, of course, I have this. I saved it right into my Dropbox. Dropbox is going to save it. I actually do have a another uh, network storage kind of thing that I keep at my house. Or you can plug in your portable hard drive. You can drag and drop, copy it. This is say, you're in games. I don't know why I picked this folder, but I just want to, this is my portable drive. Let's just say, now that zip file, I should be able to literally open that up anytime later on additions in FL Studio. 10 years down the line, I should be able to open up that same project file and it should work. That's it for today, guys.